vardı hoş güzerde güneş alkır hazarda sevgili geçen yerde bütün şehir yeri koydu hoş güzerde Bakı sabahın hayır Bakı sabahın hayır Bakı sabahın hayır Bakı sabahın hayır Örkleri karadır
Gece halvet çebze sevgili yar gelmiş idi Üzvaydan da güzel naslı nigar gelmiş idi Terakıp gül yanağından buludu ötmüştü dayı onu düşmanlık olup köllüşkar gelmiş idi Ona ben göz getirip helvet baktım, baktım Ofçunun oylağına körpeşkar gelmiş idi Uyuyup her ikimiz rahat olup bir yattık Ofçunun oylağına 
کر پشکار گلمیشیدی اوه چونون اویلگنا کر پشکار گلمیشیدی Demedir, söyleme ettin yarın bir öpüş istedim ondan yeri var gelmiş idi terahıp gül yanağından bulut ötmüştür ayın of çunun o yılağına gelmiş Bize çeşm kumar gelmişdim Demir ya da bize çeşm kumar gelmişdim Everyone, welcome back and welcome to panel five of our column on um, Dante and Nami, Nami and Dante. Um, I am uh, Christine Van Rumbeek from uh, University and I um, asked for uh, this panel now. This panel who very excitingly is um, uh, focusing on semiotics of love between profane and sacred. So we have three participants. Um, uh, Professor uh, Yusi uh, Fova from Slavic University, Professor Bahi uh, Shova, independent scholar, and uh, Professor Isaeva from the Institute of Literature named after Nezami Ganjavi. So each of our participants has 15 minutes and I will warn them when they need to conclude their paper. So we start uh, without further ado with uh, Professor Ulkar Yusifova, um, Baku Slavic University Folklore Institute. And uh, Professor Yusifova will be talking about Nezami's fairy tale language and the role of fairy tales in psychology based on the poem, The Seven Beauties, The Haft Beikar. So, Professor Yusifova, your uh, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much. Sevinç, can you start with this? Sevinç, uh, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not a professor. Uh, I'm a PhD student. Uh, I wanted uh, to correct this uh, little, little list, um, small mistake. Sorry. Uh, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, my um, paper's name is Nizami's Fair Tale Language and the Role of Fair Tales in Psychology based on the poem Seven Beauties. Uh, I will uh, introduce my uh, paper in, in Azerbaijani. Uh, and now, Nizami means Doksan Yetinji Lekada ve Hamsa'nın Yetinji Payaması olan Yetinji. Nizami is Hamsa, the, uh, the key uh, element of, of course, of the seven beauties. Uh, was uh, Nizami, Khosrov, and Bakhon Shah. Also, when we speak about these important events, uh, they have outlined, of course, uh, the uh, essence of the uh, lesson for the following generations. When we look at the latest publication of the book and the, the seven beauties, we have Bakhram Shah character and uh, which of course emulates a, a number of important qualities that uh, that could be actually 
again taught as a lesson to all other follow-up generations. It also mentions Bukhari and Tabari, also the important sources of such kind. Uh, the, the, when we look at Gabus Nama, 1001 Night, and other works, of course, have benefited from that. Uh, when we look at the uh, works of Nizami and the, the, the use of 1001 Nights and also the plot that was using, that was applied as it played a critical role. From the earliest uh, times and up to now, we, and, and also in the, to the towards the renaissance of times, we see the uh, elements and the key ideas of humanism and love and compassion, as well as they basically improves and perfect the piece of, of the poem of the seven beauties that is used as a key plot. The seven beauty uh, poem uh, also from the uh, different literature point of view, the, the genre they is used uh, when the Bahram Shah tales are critical, and uh, again, on the other hand, these tales in itself have a separate plot per se, and uh, even they are linked to one common root and they have also separate beginning and the and the end of the tale. So I will be speaking about the folklore formulas that we have. I'd like to also scrutinize the the tales in throughout the seven beauties. The, in the seven beauties, it's conventional form. The, in the folklore studies, when we speak about conventional formulas, they, there are different. There are usually different ways of interpretation, and uh, time, space, of course, characters, and the ending are the critical elements. In the seven beauties, we when we speak about conventional traditional traditional formula. The traditional formula it means the uh, key uh, elements and key phrases and word combinations that are being used throughout the work. We have uh, scrutinized this, of course, on, on our end, and by giving you several examples, I would like to enumerate, well, some of them in the first place. The ending, the beginning, the onset of the, of course, in the stage where the general landscape, where this tale is carried, for example, there's uh, uh, other key phrases that are used as a cliche in the beginning of the poems, in the poems. But in the tales, we see also the structure, which is very much different from what we have, you know, used to see before. In the first tale, we have a, a king that uses uh, different phrases like that. There are, there are five brides in the castle, and uh, one, uh, we speak about Yes, speak about the tale and uh, when we have the daughters of the king and uh, also look at the, all the compassion and, and the love that they have towards each other. Um, when, when there is um, a, a king and uh, the ending of other tales, when these tales were heard by the king, the king also cherishes a love towards the, his daughters. Uh, at the same time, there's also space for yeah, to live in, in calmness and uh, peace, you need obviously to have a space where one time and uh, one space. There is certain uncertainty over here, and uh, the, the same ten trend is being observed also in the seven beauties. There are different interpretation of that. In the mixed formulas, the space, time are also intertwined. Uh, usually when you read Azerbaijani tales, we find out that in the very first sentence, we see basically the onset of the stage. There's a time and also space that are being highlighted, for example, in this particular time, and this particular uh, uh, place. Uh, look at the space formula. For example, there is a king, there was a king in the area of Egypt, and there was has its own uh, subordinates. When we speak about the space, well, obviously Egypt is a space, and also in the beginning of the formula, we see a person who was living back in the times in this particular area. The fourth tale was about the Russian lady, and also the tale that she tells to Bahram. Also, the same formula that they were uh, phrases and the regarding the castle where the king was living and was also cherishing the daughter. So we see here the formula of the space and also the future, the future time and also the daughter that the, the king was cherishing, of course, uh, speaks about the person, the main character. Sometimes the time 
element is either uncertain or not very specific. And therefore, when we speak about these phrases, we we see that the time is basically contributed to uncertainty. Like in the in the tales, when they they don't have the day of establishment in the same way, the time is not very specific. So the flowers uh, were bestowed upon this uh, daughter, and also in the sixth tale we see the f the contradiction and the fight against the uh, in between the evil and the and the good. Uh, in general, when we speak about uh, time, the same can be applied to the space, whether it is that day or the other day. They were moving, they were traveling for quite a while. This kind of uh, and phrases about the movement or time also attributable to the tales. The, they they re reached a certain city and and spent a night over there. Uh, the tale was speaking about, again, non-specific locations. Uh, we can also testify that the tale in itself as a genre, since the onset is not clear, then the, the time, of course, of the tale is not clear either. The, in terms of the psychology, as I also put Point out in the statement in the in the name of the uh, the title of our presentation. In terms of the psychological, you know, perspective, you will basically reach an age where you will not need to read the tales anymore. I think a very important, I think, interpretation uh, of the tale genre and also the how psychology plays a role there, or how tales properly, you know, play a role in psychology. Like the Bayram Shah is actually Bayram Shah is actually being educated by the tale. I think I wanted just to go and deep dive into that a little bit more, and we will speak about this. We, of course, tales, you know, they they have a great impact on psychology, and not only the obviously the adult ones, but they're obviously much more they have the impact on the uh, children, and also from a pedagogical point of view, they they are of utmost importance. Uh, other psychologists and psychiatrists worked on that and uh, spoke also extensively about the importance of tales on the upbringing as well as the overall children development. The characters that they read in the tales, they, they visualize, they actually are being assimilated as well as uh, basically to all of the characters that they are going to see in the real life. Uh, in Az Azerbaijani tales, as well as other tales for that matter, basically the, the ending is obviously a happy ending. And there is no basically tale where you see a main character being um, murdered or uh, being disappeared in the end of the story. Then it is, of course, important to make sure that there is a lot of strength associated with this character. And the, But the idea that the, the human being is the one, the one, the one in charge and one and powerful. So these uh, tales, of course, also, uh, you know, rather uh, trans uh, I mean, crosses the generation, the generation, and points out the good is to win at all the times, and we're going to overcome the challenges and win over the evil. So when we uh, look at the. Uh, the dress of the uh, of the characters, uh, the the black dress, or uh, that will fight against the, the 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 white ones, the white garment, and in the end, the change of dress symbolically from black to white um, emphasizes the victory the triumph of the good again over the evil. And there are three apples that have fallen. One is yours, one is mine, and one is the one who is reading that story. So this is also shows a psychological kind of point in a way, because like when we speak at Johnny Rodari, for example, the Italians, the, uh, and also the, the one who is in charge of the Cipollino, and uh, to, that is also one of the ways to uh, educate the children. And uh, he uh, honors in this and uh, the the author points out that the concepts of good and bad uh, are there the good and evil Ushinsky also speak about them very highly and speak about the psychology of children and all, all the development of the children through since their childhood most of the tales of course the happy ending and when we look uh, the values as well as other uh, stories the by the by the by the hiking of the mountains by the going through the, the through the journey there are different formulas and the conventional ones to show the landscape and um, 
also there is a story about the seasonality here. Whatever the tales were used in the educational process, of course, were very commendable. I also suppose that this tale and then also from the tales and from the seven beauties uh, actually they address the, the issues related to with the adults. So because Bahram Shah was educated, there are certain other elements when you read the entire story. In it, you know, uh, you will see that. There are certain summaries, certain executive summaries, I think, that would be provided to the school children to make sure that in the, in the fifth one, when you see the evil and the good, the the, the struggle in, in between these two concepts, also show in the society, to our children that what wins in the society. Uh, also, the obviously, in the classes on literature and the allocation of some, certain time to discuss the poem, the, the poem Seven Beauties in its entirety, as well as the tales associated with that. There are tales that are, let's say, assigned to a certain particular age. And we can come to a conclusion that these tales are other tales for adults, but also, of course, have a great impact on the children. In the Nizami era, uh, it was important to emphasize the humanism in the stories of these, uh, in stories throughout this work. I would like to conclude by again emphasizing that when we look at this, at the seven beauties, I mean, uh, when you read the tales beforehand, you don't treat them through the prism of the uh, tale, the seven beauties one. But when we look like at the same like one thousand and one night, and you see the padishah as well as the other subordinate uh, dialogues and conversations, I believe that in the seven beauties, the seven beauty in itself is a tale, even though it is uh, considered a, a poem. I believe that there is also an, a traditional formula such as on beginning, ending, and the concepts of time, space, and so on. I think you know it will. Be, it was interesting to, to scrutinize this from a tale perspective. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you uh, very much. Um, if I may uh, use your, your first name, this was a, a very uh, interesting and, and um, innovative you. way of, uh, of looking at the, um, the, seven, uh, the seven beauty tales. Um, so we are not opening the floor yet for questions and, and reactions. Um, so I want just to thank you very much and then pass on. Uh, and also thank you for keeping to the time exactly. Um, and so I'll pass on the floor now to uh, Sevinj um, Bahi Shova, uh, who is an independent uh, scholar in the UK. And will talk to us about and sacred love in poems of Nezami and Dante. Hello, um, I'm going. I'm going to have my speech in English. First, I just want to say some words in Azerbaijani. Uh, I wanted to thank all participants present here and to Rahila, obviously on a special note, and to Arzu, of course, beyond any doubt. I will continue my speech in English because. English is a rather international language. Uh, I apologize for speaking my language, my native one. I start my paper in English. Uh, actually, when I uh, when I wrote it, I just realized that do both. If I do that and Nizami, that will be too long, and it cannot be finished. I cannot finish it in even twenty minutes. So I decided to have the um uh, to illustrate uh, to illustrate um, uh, to illustrate my theory just on uh, based on nizami's uh, poem Lili and majnun so in presentation speak of profane and divine love portrayed by nizami genjavi applying the jungian theory of individuation to analyze the stages that guys uh, later, uh, Majnun goes through and coordinating it with Sufi understanding of love that Nizami was portraying. In his essay, two essays on analytical psychology, Jung writes, individu individuation means becoming an individual. And so far as individuality embraces our innermost lust and incomparable uniqueness, it also implies becoming one's own self. We could therefore translate individuation as coming to selfhood or self-realization. 
Hence, this is the process. Um, hence, this is the process of becoming a complete human being, where we integrate all the parts of our personality of which we aren't presently conscious. This notion coincides with the Sufi idea of the ideal man, a whole man that not only realizes his connection with God, and part of the whole, but is completely dissolved in the whole uh, as the penultimate uh, goal of the Sufi. So the individuation process starts when the conscious meets the unconscious, two opposite meet and the acknowledgement of the other begins. The individuation can be a slow and long process. It can be initiated by the wise old man uh, or it can start with the crisis when a man confronts with the archetype of shadow or archetype of anima. Falling in love is such a crisis, numerous times illustrated in the world literature, if we remember Romain and Juliet, uh, Lely and Mangnon, um, Dante and uh, 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 the um, examples of love that portrayed uh, by Dante in his Divine Comedy. Uh, prior to beginning the individuation process, we have certainty. Through the course of our development, we form a solid self-identity. We think we know who we are. People around us think they know who we are. So is Majnun uh, Guy's time. Uh, uh, in the beginning of the poem, he's the handsomest boy with the best manners. Nizami says, uh, here I'm uh, all my uh, quotation from Nizami are from the uh, book uh, translated by Dr. Gelbke, uh, 1966 edition. Uh, it's prosaic translation. Soon Geis was one of the best pupils. He easily mastered the arts of reading and writing. And when he talked, it was as if his tongue was scattering pearls. It was a delight to listen to him, says Nizami. But this self-identity is always one-sided. It's an illusion or maya, as Buddhists would call it. Because we are unconscious, we don't feel the inherent tensions and oppositions between the conscious self and the unconscious part of ourselves. So for guys to become Majnun, he needed to meet Leili. So, and then uh, after meeting Leili, the transformative process of individuation begins. Uh, Jung considered Eros to be a cosmogonos, a creator and father mother of all heart consciousness. In memories, dreams and reflections, he wrote, we are the deepest victims in the instrument of cosmogonos love. Falling in love, shattering ego the identifications. Through such experiences of ego death, we awaken to a more expansive way of being. So that is what happens to uh, guys and beautifully described by Nizami. Uh, just a small quotation again from Nizami. Together they had inhaled the scent of a flower, its name unknown, its magic great. And yet no one had noticed. So they went on drinking their wine and enjoying the sweet scent. They drank by day and dreamed by night. And the more they drank, the deeper they became immersed in each other. Their eyes become blind and they ease deaf to the school and the world. They had found each other. So the individuation process begins for guys. Uh, and uh, so it's, uh, and for him, it starts with this confrontation with anima. Uh, anima, uh, according to Jung, is the uh, unconscious, feminine side of a man, uh, emotional side. So if before entering Lily, guys is a well-articulate pupil that mastered the art of reading and writing, thus with fully developed rational side. After meeting Lily, he becomes a poet. Uh, however, as sometimes in the extreme situation of the individuation process, the person is fully immersed in his anima, which is the case with Majnun, and Leili becomes a mirror for his soul. Uh, in Red Book, he also wrote about personal uh, experiences, and he said that he found his soul again only through the soul of the woman. He later explained that conscious content are first met in relationship with a partner. This urge to a higher and more comprehensive consciousness, that it is to feel its purpose and needs all parts of the, of the whole, including those that are projected onto you. So sometimes it's through loving another, including their shadow aspect that we learn to accept, even love those some shadow aspects in ourselves. It's 
And if one's partner is truly loved, then the human being becomes a representative of the unconscious. Love is a mediator circulating energy both outwardly and inwardly. So this is what happens to uh, guys when he meets Lely, he meets his, um, as we would say in uh, Jungian terminology, he meets his anima and also he meets um, he meets his uh, shadow archetype. Uh, shadow archetype is um, a representation of all the unconscious uh, dark uh, side of, uh, per, of a person who, uh, who, even, uh, who didn't realize it before he met the, his uh, shadow archetype. And interestingly enough, there is a symbolic relationship between the meaning of the name Leili uh, which is night, dark, or black in Arabic, and the identification of the uh, uh, of the uh, shadow. <laughs> uh, so the first um, stage of the individuation is the meeting and assimilation of the shadow. Uh, the uh, archetype of shadow not only symbolizes the unconscious, it sometimes can also exhibit immoral threats in a common sense. So the love of Majnun and Lili seems immoral for their surrounding. And uh, even uh, in, in such a in, to such extent that a family of Lili, in order not to further damage Lili's reputation, removes her from school. Uh, so this type of love, which breaks through the illusory maya of un unconscious projections, could be considered a process of mutual individuation. If the tension of opposites can be held, a third kind of relationship can be formed, which Jung called a golden thread. He considered this type of relationship to be the only lasting one, in which it is that as though there was an invisible telegraph wire between two human beings. So the relationship between Majnun and Lili are of the uh, nature of golden thread, unbreakable and beyond the physical world. Uh, uh, so the meetings, um, in Jungian words, uh, the meeting of two personalities is like the uh, contact of two chemical substance, substances. If there is any reaction, both are transformed. Through the transformative reaction of love, uh, Lili, uh, guys discovers who he, who is he really are and distinguish himself from the projection that were portrayed on him before as a, a well-mannered and beautiful boy. Um, so, uh, um, in analytical psychology, uh, the anima is both a personal complex and archetypal image of woman in the male psyche. So uh, according to Jung, uh, the unconscious factor incarnated in you in every male child and is responsible for the mechanism of projection. Initially ad identified with the personal mother, the anima is later experienced not only in other women, but as pervasive influence in man's life. Uh, so uh, in his book, Syzygy, Anima and Animus, uh, uh, Jung uh, says that uh, th uh, this is, uh, there is in man an imago, not only of the mother, but of the daughter, the sister, the beloved, the heavenly goddess, and the chthonic baubo. Every mother and every beloved is forced to become the carrier and embodiment of this omnipresent and ageless image, which corresponds to the deepest reality in a man. So actually by meeting Lely, uh, Geis is confronting his own, um, his own uh, unconscious side, the uh, emotional side. So um, as we know that the, uh, the cosmos and microcosm and the human is a, a microcosmos is a yin and yang is a male and female emotional and rational so uh, before meeting Lely he was fully developed rational being when meeting Lely uh, he starts uh, he starts uh, kind of uh, delving into his unconscious side, into his own unconscious side, which is projected on a physical reality with uh, like uh, meet, meeting and loving Lily. 
So Jung distinguished four broad stages of the anima, analogous to levels of the eros cult described in the late classical period. He personified them I as- must, I must interrupt to tell you two more minutes, please. Oh, really? Oh, I thought- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I will be quite short. So he personified them as Eve, Helen, Mary, and Sophia. So if Eve is a personification of mother, uh, Mary uh, and Helen is personification of a uh, fully uh, fully grown up woman on a uh, is a profane is a on a profane uh, plan. So Mary and Sophia are the uh, anima on the sacred plan on the uh, divine uh, that corresponds to the divine love. Oh, um, okay. Um, so I think the, the best would be to go to your conclusion. Yes. Okay. Yes. I will go to my conclusions. Just a second. Um, so I just wanted to talk to say uh, at the very end when uh, Majnun becomes the uh, when Majnun becomes the uh, purified of all his physical uh, physical relationship and he becomes just the colonel for Lily uh, and he says that love is the essence of my being love is fire and I'm wood burned by the flame so uh, so this is the perfect uh, illustration of the highest form that every Sufi strives to reach, that is complete surrender and annihilation of nafs and ego in Jungian terms is the complete individuation and becoming so whole self. So I just want, uh, for the Jungian ideas interrelated with Sufi ideas in many aspects, the theory of individuation is one of them. For Sufi, the main goal of his existence is purification of oneself that goes through many stages and struggles with nafs and ego. Ego. Uh, the ultimate goal is being one with God. So, uh, uh, but by comparing it with the stages of individuation theory, I've attempted to explain the psychological aspects of it and show that this is not a merely religious path, but the journey of all humans can take in their life with more or less success. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry for my scrambled <laughs> presentation. Maybe. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Sevinja. And, uh, and I apologize for cutting you short, but uh, this is uh, these are the, the rules of the of the game. Um, we have uh, a little bit of time after after the last presentation for um, you know questions and, and comments, and you might have uh, even uh, an opportunity to maybe refer to what you couldn't uh, explain uh, just now. Uh -huh. Uh, so anyway, uh, we we pass on to the to the third of our pres uh, participants uh, in um, in our panel. Uh, this is uh, Parvana Isaeva from the Institute of Literature, named after Nezami Ganjavi. Um, and so Parvana is going to uh, speak to us about synergetic aspects of the artistic text based on uh, Nezami Ganjavi's poet, uh, poem Eskandar Naume. So, uh, Professor Isayeva, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, during the pandemic, of course, it has been difficult, uh, but I would like to, well, first of all, thank everyone for organizing this important event to discuss the synergetic aspect of the artistic text. So the point is that since I am working in the field of literature, uh, in the 20s, the first half of the 20th century, there are different new methodological concepts and approaches that have been appearing, semiotic as well as structuralism, as well as system theory. And all of this created the synergetic paradigms that are being used in this humanitarian sciences and so on that applies to uh, also uh, the synthetic uh, and synergetic approach uh, and strengthens this connection between different aspects of looking at the Iskander Name or other uh, works of our d distinguished writers. When we speak about Iskander Name by Nizami, we need to look at the way how myths were used and the, how myth 
in fact uh, is uh, interpreted throughout the work and we need to find out the etymology of the words that are being used as well as the again synergetic aspect this is obviously a, a sophisticated system and according to our theory when we speak about method and we will share this throughout the works i mean it create paves the way for additional uh, again complicated uh, systems so when we look at uh, the systems uh, it's important to connect the dots here and understand that the myths are a part of the story uh, when we speak about again uh, artistic text based on Nizami Ganjavi's poem uh, the uh, we need to specify the methodologies that is being used I mean it's obviously not something that were that appeared on the surface in 20th century but rather in the formal schools and school of uh, Shiklovsky, Tunyanov and uh, Bayesyarkov and other work and other schools the artistic text was there was tested in terms of application of the scientific methods specific in the Boris Yakov's specific methodology and the way it was applied for on the for the uh, in the case of artistic text I believe was critical uh, for multiple years this has been discussed and uh, the models and the framework models were used they also they were coined as an as an innovation and uh, attempted to prepare the systems as well as understand the essence of the world and have a different look at all of the artistic texts uh, many in in many cases the people who were involved in the more sciences uh, were looking in the russian science for example there's a, also uh, other russian um, Im important uh, science scholars that were looking at the synergetic aspect and uh, this is not only in obviously in the in the in the hard sciences but also very much applied in the humanitarian science so we can have a two aspect view on that we will look at the, at the myth from a synergetic aspect in the first place and then when we look at the system of this uh, artistic text what kind of measures can be taken to look at this uh, at the myth and the synergy between two of them this is of course very much connected process this regulate itself and uh, and uh, it's important to look at the cases and uh, the myths and the dynamic uh, so there are small systems that can be worked on and uh, this allows uh, com uh, harmony between synergetic and the myth so we know that uh, myth is one of the ways of doing that and when we look at this uh, we need to look at the sophisticated systems that are available so we also need to point out that the synergetic analysis of the system is uh, allows to have different methodology uh, and connect them with again hard sciences and humanitarian sciences in philology there's obviously in, in linguistics to protect and also uphold the the synergetic aspect in Russian literature we see multiple exa examples of the analysis of the synergetic system we see social synergetic homo synergetic and other fields of such kind when we speak about the artistic literature or other components the literature is obviously not only reflect but also represent the the interest of the system the structure there's a complicated sophisticated systems that have the reader the audience as well as other important uh, elements when we speak about myth and uh, the uh, the different 
systems need to uh, be moved and ensure that there's enough awareness and information that is carried throughout these texts. Uh, this is again, this is called differently in hard sciences, but also uh, when we look at the uh, interdisciplinary way of handling this. Well, uh, uh, Confucius was saying that the one who is repeating something actually is finding out something new for himself. So by repeating the past, the comments and statements, you may end up learning a lot of new things likewise. Therefore, of course, when we look at uh, the art of using words, it can create harmony and peace and tranquility in the minds of people who are using these words. When we look at the synergetic paradigms in the in in Skandar Manam, in Skandar Nam and Nizam again by Nizam again, Jave, we see the synergetic systems that uh, are reflected, and I see actually gives us an opportunity to find out more about his works. So when we speak about the Skandar Name, or uh, we find out that there is a synergetic uh, importance, and uh, so this world, the the world hereafter, and other uh, so synergetic, of course. Uh, is there to to support it, to help and uh, to improve itself, improve itself. Is the characters in Iskander Nama are obviously different different uh, characters. We know that in most of the uh, uh, researches, every five hundred years we see. Uh, uh, every 500 years we see a new uh, the characters that can basically re re renovate its body and can rejuven re re rejuvenate so uh, the, 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 the aspect to be able to recreate itself as well as to uh, renew itself I think it's, it's critical so this is also uh, the, as a synergetically uh, speaking uh, in Iskandar Nama they look for itself the food the truth and the substance uh, and uh, we also see the Ikhtiyar Goju uh, persona the character and then the, his name was not uh, mentioned specifically but um, it was defined later on throughout the work in Iskandar Nama there are all the legends uh, of also that, that that have a combination or amalgamation of the both Arabic, Turkic, and other personas and other um, characters that, of course, serve the point. So the Turkic Islamic uh, culture. Uh, and we can see that the um, the other different sources that uh, speak about the prophetic knowledge uh, and uh, I would like to point out likewise that uh, the synergetic paradigm of Nizami has uh, this open system concept and I would like to say that Uh, and uh, so in the open systems there are different elements here we need to look at the landscape and different environments are they artistic and uh, mythological component when that they are intertwined they are very much connected and they support and actually feed each other in a way if we look at the artistic text and would like to point out then we need to understand that Iskandar Nama this persona the characters and other messes associated with this in the system we need to interpret them obviously differently for example in the synergetic aspect for the synergetic aspect of the system, there with non-linear approach. In the modern literature text, we see that these texts, um, they are not linear, they are non-linear, they are it's fragmented in most of the cases. And the new paradigm, it's a non-linear paradigm. Therefore, of course, 
uh, it is critical to find out more about these ways of how this is being developed for example in the in mathematics there's a fuzzy logic and so on when we speak about the nizami we see also a fuzzy uh, uh, ways of exploring reality one is in the sources and uh, and the turkic sources the water the uh, elements uh, welfare and and uh, elements that are bestowed upon us so these aspects give us an opportunity to uh, look at this energetic approach and apply it to the reality and the humanity in general. I I'm would sorry, like to... I have to, I have to uh, tell you that you have three more minutes. Please uh, go to your conclusion. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. So in the artistic text, uh, there are different approaches applied and the the new ones of course need need to be looked at we need to emphasize that there are fragmented parts of the text that also need to be taken care of this gives us an opportunity to look at the different analysis as well as other uh, opportunities so we obviously established a system for itself we have an artistic text and com merge it or marry it with some with something else and the, with the myth the the information that is carried by the myth i think it's a very sophisticated system and this system allows us to scrutinize this in a from a synergetic perspective when we speak about myth and uh, there are certain researchers are uh, looking at the case and saying that that these individuals they they start not to believe in the method when when they actually move to a next stage after 100 years 1000 of years the method and artistic text that are reflecting this method now are not uh, credible and for them but myth is also obviously a part of a, of an artistic literature and therefore i think our the point the outcome of this research is to not look at the artistic from the text from the phil, uh, philological point of view but also from a different perspective thank you very much for your attention thank you very much uh, professor isayeva and um, my apologies for uh, interrupting and, and shortening your your presentation a little bit so that that it was important to keep to the to the time so this was also a um, really fascinating presentation um now we have a little bit of time for for questions and 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 um, comments and and thoughts around uh, our three panelists so um do i i'll 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 look around, please raise your hands if you would like to ask a question. And if I don't see you, please uh, just uh, take, take the floor with a question. I don't, I don't see anything at the moment. So maybe I can start the ball rolling. Um, uh, Professor Isayeva, so you, you have been uh, uh, giving us um, extremely um, complex um, ideas about the um, synergy in uh, Nezami's work. Um, this was really very interesting. Now, I would like to just ask you maybe to, to refine a little bit or to tell us a little bit more about, um, you said uh, this, the Eskandar no me or, or, and, and the texts that look like it are not uh, linear, non-linear texts. Um, so do you, do you actually um, mean to say that this is due to the synergetic structure of these texts? Is this typical for for um, texts that have such a um, such a such a, a very strong synergy. I would like to say that when we look at the text, uh, we basically concluded based on the text that we looked at is that it is a non-linear and we see the sequence here the nizam is following kind of three paths at a time uh, it is not a linear approach it's kind of non-linear when we look at the arabic legends there's a general legends and myths and also what is happening in the thinking and the pondering uh, phenomena 
but Nizami's works are usually linear, but it is not, let's say, as non-linear in the fragmented or in the modern life, uh, in the modern life. I think this synergetic method, I think this is why it is happening. And uh, we, we don't know to what extent it is right or wrong uh, for obvious reasons, but I think the non-linear approach is kind of more reflected in the modern literature. The plot is fragmented. We see different non-linear phenomena. Uh, but in general terms, we see in the the uh, when it was looking for resources, then then we can speak about nonlinear ways. Thank you very much for for uh, uh, clarifying this for. Um, I don't know if anybody else wants to um, add something around this. I don't see. Yes, uh, Georgia, I see your hand is raised. Thank you very much. I wanted to ask a question to Professor uh, Yusifova and about space and time. I would like to know if it's possible to expand a bit more on this conception, especially maybe to, to tell me a bit more if it's possible that space and time sometimes are not very well explained or specific because maybe the writer wanted to live something for the imagination of the readers or what is your opinion about this and what do you think especially what is what can be the relationship with this and the images that have been usually created especially on on half car and on different uh, on all the story of nezami how the images can actually give more um, a different approach to space and time but at the same time they are imaginary so this will just a way and a space to represent that might not be actually presented or talked about. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Georgia. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I wanted to show work in uh, Seven Beaches and uh, as a poem, there are, uh, time, there is, there is time, uh, there is even space mentioned them also, but uh, because there is in uh, and in, uh, in the text of this poem, uh, there, are, there is not uh, time, there is not space, uh, especially uh, in things that uh, these uh, this are not stories, they are uh, like uh, <clears throat> um, uh, by the by the author, and um, that's why I, uh, no time, there's no space in this, uh, in, this in the, uh, the uh, space, time, not uh, directly mentioned. That uh, I think time uh, in uh, such in uh, like, um, other uh, countries. Uh, uh, we, we can see that they mentioned times they uh, they mentioned uh, time, time, but in Azerbaijan there is not uh, time, there is not um, space. Uh, that's why I think that the prism of my uh, thank you very much for. Uh for uh, finding this, um, I, I, was, I was also uh, interested in um, what you were mentioning, uh, Ulkar, uh, about, about the impact of the uh, on uh, psychology, bringing uh, development, um, and especially about the importance of a happy ending. Can you can you expand a little bit on that? Is it is it is it true that all the tales in Nizami end well? Do you think? And and is it um, is it something that that is that is um, essential in in using these tales on, as um, in, in in children's upbringing and, and um, development? Uh, I think uh, not all of uh, tales, uh, but uh, only just only in seven pages. Uh, the space and uh, the time is uh, not. Exactly, and uh, that's why I think uh, I could um, uh, understand and put um, replay 
the uh, answer. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Do we have any any other questions for uh, um, our participants? I I see that unfortunately, if I'm not wrong, uh, Sevinch has left us, so we can't ask her for any further. She um, is here. Uh, she is here, and um, she's joining now. She's she's around. I, I don't see her on the on screen anymore. No, I don't. Uh... But um, I don't I don't know if if uh, anyone else wants to wants to uh, give us any ideas, Ma Maria. I see. <laughs> Lisa, I, I, see that you have yes, a I have yeah. a, a little question. Um, what, uh, which are uh, the translation who you read in general in Azerbaijan? Uh, translation of Dante. Uh, which are the languages? I, I know there are in English, in Persian, in Russian. Is there a translation in Azerbaijan language? Uh, I'm sorry, can I answer the question? Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, firstly, it was in Russian, but nowadays uh, we can easily uh, read in Azerbaijan. Thank you. I can also answer this question. There is a translation done uh, in 19, I think 73. I own the translation, I can show you. I have the book. I'm, I will bring it now. <laughs> It's in Italy, we, we have uh, um, we have not uh, many translation of Nizami, but now uh, recently we, we have some translation very interesting is, in uh, the Elfis. So it's, there is a translation uh, it's of Italy now. There is a translation of Bausani. Mm -hmm. Haft yes, is it? in Bausani. Uh, yes. It was Bausani, Gabriel. Bausani it was yes. the, the only translation. Yeah, the only translation. But now we have uh, some translation uh, also in um, this, Adelph. This is Dante yeah. in, in Azerbaijan. Ah, magnifico. Thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> and <laughs> it, it has the illustrations of Gustav Doré. Ah, oh, yeah. the classical. It is, it classical is with the illustrations of Gustav Doré. Mm -hmm. And I can show you, I own the book. This is, for example. Yes, but yeah. I know very, very, very well Gustave Doré. It was the first yeah. edition of Dante yeah. that my parents <laughs> gave to me. So it was very- It was very translated impressive. in 1973, actually, mm -hmm. from Russian. Russian from, edition uh, of 67. Uh, uh, not from Italy, but no, from- No, no, it was translated from Russian. That was oh, a ah, practice during the Soviet period. As a translator of poetry, I know there are some problems when, when you have uh, two or yeah. three languages. This, I, I can That's feel also this, uh, the same problems when I read and when I compare it with Turkish, because mm -hmm. the Turkish was directly translated from Italian. And yesterday, I, uh, you also asked this question. I, I showed the book, but then I didn't want to interfere. Mm. But this is the book, actually. It's from 1970. Yes. It's very interesting. There is a translation. There is a translation from Russian. Yes. It's very interesting uh, for, for us, I yes. think. Yeah. Very Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. OK. Um, if, we are, if we are ready, so I do everyone on screen. I didn't see any further any further questions or any further um, comments that are coming up. So I think we can we can uh, finish and, and close the panel five. Um, so I give you um, rendezvous for panel six in a little while.